Bob's Breakfast. Chris brought us a great story earlier about a bloke in France who bought a house and he found it full of gold. And he sold the gold for like three million quid. Holy dooly. What have you found in a place that the other people who live there have left behind? Sarah. My mum moved into a house and um, there was a guy, she bought it from a guy who was living with his wife. Yeah. Anyway, she's clearing up the kitchen and right, you know right on top of your kitchen cupboards up high, there was a box of old love letters and all of his ex got to see on stage and writing to him and saying like, why are you marrying her? Why didn't you marry Oh me? no! And he's hidden them and went, wow! Well, she didn't know what to do with them because she thought, do I, if I forward them on, is the wife going to get <laughs> annoyed? Yeah. Like, are they important? She just didn't know what to do. So I don't actually know what she did do with them again. But, I wonder yeah. why he kept them. Once you get married, that's the end of the game. Oh, you know, because they weren't that well hidden. It's not like they're under floorboard or something like that. They were under the kitchen cupboard. So. Maybe he wanted his wife to find them. <gasps> Maybe. So maybe. that he could go, you know, uh, I got I got a couple of options still open. <laughs> there was more than one ex-fiancé as well. Was there? Really? <laughs> wow, how interesting. You've probably heard that Donald Trump's wife, Melania, has been accused of nicking bits of her speech from Michelle Obama. The current first lady, I've done a comparison and I've put the two back to back for you to hear. See if you think uh, that one has stolen from the other. Values, like you work hard for what you want in life. The values that you work hard for what you want in life. I mean, those two sound pretty similar to me. That your word is your bond, that you do what you say you're going to do. That your word is your bond. And you do what you say and keep your promise. Pretty close. That you treat people with dignity and respect. That you treat people with respect. Because we want our children and all children in this nation to know that the only limit to the height of your achievements is the reach of your dreams and your willingness to work hard for them. Because we want our children in this nation to know that the only limit to your achievements is the strength of your dreams and your willingness to work for them. I put it to you, based on the evidence you're about to hear, that Melania Trump has also stolen from somebody even more important than Michelle Obama. Listen to this. He will never, ever give up. And most importantly, he will never, ever let you down. Never gonna give you up, never gonna let you down. He will never, ever give up. He will never, ever let you down. Bob's Breakfast. Let's go to the phone. Who's this? My name is Martin. Hello, Martin. What can I do for you? Hiya. Hi. My name's Martin, and I'm calling from I Love Savings. I Love Savings, okay. Yeah, okay. Oh, wait, wait, Martin, 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 slow down. Internet. Yes. And what can I do for you this morning? You're from I'm I Love you know, Savings. A quick survey today. You doing a what? To ask you a couple of questions. Quick to survey. See if we can save you some money. Uh, Is that okay. okay? Save, well, save me some money on what? The survey focuses on bills like your energy. Yeah, yeah, Martin, Martin, slow down. Martin, are you a human being or a recording? Yes. Yeah, I, yeah, one or the other. Which are you? Are you a human being or a recording? Yes. Yeah, we, yeah, which one? You're a recording, aren't you? No. You're not a recording. You are a live person. I'm talking to a live person here. Yes. Okay. What's your last name, Martin? Martin? I'm sorry. I don't know the answer to that, I'm afraid. Honestly, this is like talking to Siri. <laughs> sorry? Martin. Am I talking to a human yes. being or a recording? Uh-huh. Martin, this are you... These all pre-recorded messages operated by a live person. You cannot be pre-recorded and live. It's impossible. Yes. Yes, yes, it is impossible. You agree that it is impossible? No. You don't agree that it's not impossible. Martin, you're making no sense. Martin, are you a complete idiot? No. How do you know that for sure? You sound like one. No. You do <laughs> sound like one. I'm telling you, you sound like one. 
This is all pre-recorded messages operated by a live person. Martin, we that's impossible. You can't be a pre-recorded message. On all our calls. Martin, you can't be pre-recorded and a live message. You're one or the other. Which one are you? Yes. <laughs> this software is crap. Yes. <laughs> I'm glad we agree on something. This is Bob. It's always nice to get an unexpected compliment. Yesterday, Julie, my wife, uh, she's talking to a lady in the lobby of the block of flats where we live. Now, Julie's in her 40s. The lady looked at Julie, tilted her head to one side and said, Are you 23? Well, Julie gave a polite giggle and made a minor adjustment to her hair. And then the lady carried on. Because there's some mail here for 23 that's ended up in our mailbox. Bob FM. Inappropriate laughter. Jackie. On Sunday, I went camping with my husband. He had this motorhome transferred into this transit van. And so we decided to go and sleep for a night in it. So we went to Sway, which is New Forest. And uh, the van wasn't very straight. We were listing, really. So anyway, when I got some, um, I think they're called skids, things that goes under the wheels. Yeah. So it feels all level. Uh-huh. Anyway, we decided to have a cuddle in the afternoon. Mm hmm And uh, <clears throat> one thing led to another. Uh-huh. And at the crucial point... Mm hmm <laughs> the crucial point... <laughs> the van <laughs> fell off the skids. No. We dropped about two <laughs> Uh, were, said, were you okay? Oh, my God. I said, oh, my God. What was that? And he said, just ignore it, just ignore it. Of <laughs> <laughs> course he hadn't. Oh, no, all right, all right, all right, all right. I get the picture. And I, Jackie. And I, and I started laughing, right? And I, he said, please stop laughing. You're really putting me on. <laughs> stop it. Jackie. <laughs> Jackie, thanks for oversharing this morning. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Getting stuck this morning. What's your story? This is Dean. I'm phoning on behalf of my daughter who, who's just got stuck in a lift this morning. Did she? Where at? She's still in the lift now. She's at the flat at the uh, Queen Elizabeth Hospital in Welling Garden City. Wait a second. Wait a second, Dean. So... She's a, she's a grown-up daughter? Yes, yeah, she, she was on her way to work, apparently. Got in the lift, pressed the button, the lift dropped, and now she's stuck. Uh, in which block of flats? Um, it's at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. I can give you her phone number if you want to talk to her. Yeah, give me a phone number and we'll call her live, trapped in a lift. Okay. Ch cheers, Dean, thank you. See you in a bit. This is Bob. The biggest lie you've ever been told. Ben. I remember waiting for a bus, and I, I bumped into this very, very attractive girl, and I started talking to her, yeah. and I talked to her for about 20 minutes, and, and, and she just moved into the area, and uh, and she got on the bus, and she went, and, and the next few days, I thought, gosh, you know, she was very pretty, I should probably, I didn't get her phone number, but I remember she told me where she lived. <laughs> yeah. The thing is, I couldn't remember her name. Right. And I knocked on the door and the parent answered. I remember it was a Friday night and they were in the middle of dinner and, and I explained and said, listen, I met your daughter at a bus stop and I thought she was very nice. I must have sounded like a complete lunatic. Yes. And the, the dad was like, oh, very well, we'll come in. And, and he invited me in and the family were having dinner around the table. It was like a scene from The Godfather. <laughs> and, and they said, listen, do you want some dinner? You know, sit down. Where do you go to school? And I was there for about 20 minutes and they're like, oh, you know, Michelle's upstairs in the shower. She'll be down. And I thought, well, this is a very friendly family. Yeah. And, uh, and after 20 minutes, you know, I had some dinner. The girl comes down. And it's not even the right girl. <laughs> now, I is, mean, is this girl as pretty as the other girl? Uh, I don't think she was, incidentally. Right, okay. Free dinner. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this girl had sent me to completely the wrong house. <laughs> Oh, she'd lied to you and yeah. set you up with... Oh, do you reckon no, she... No, I, I don't even think she knew who lived here. Oh, she, she, she panicked. <laughs> she panicked and gave you an, any old address she could think of. Yeah. Oh, well, you have to feel sorry for the family who thought that they'd finally found someone for this well, girl. No, 
the thing is, on my way out, though, the dad slipped me the phone number of the daughter. That was the ironic thing. He slipped you her mobile number? Yeah, he gave me her, I probably gave me her mobile number. He's a very nice young man, you know, give her a call. Oh, you made quite the impression. Uh, did, well... Did you ever follow that up, Ben? <laughs> I don't think I did. <laughs> <laughs> Bob's Breakfast. Hello? Hello, Nadine. Hello. It's Graham Mack from Bob FM. Your dad, Dean, just gave me your phone number. Okay. He, he says you're trapped in a lift. I am stuck in the lift, yeah, on my way to work, on the way out. Okay, so this isn't some the flats. Can you tell us where they are? They're in Welling Garden. Yes. In um, Hertfordshire, obviously. Y yes. Um, in Court, uh, QE2. What, what's, what's it called again, Nadine? Bert Court. Did you say Bert Court? Birch. Birch, I got you. Your phone went a bit. Birch Court, and yeah. you got in the lift. The lift went down. Your dad said it, and that's it. You've been trapped in. How long you've been trapped in this lift? Uh, I've been here for about so far. It's going to be another hour yet. Yeah. Oh, hang on. How long you've been in there so far? Half an hour. Half an hour. How do you know it's going to be another hour? Because I've, I've rung the number in here. Yes. And spoke to somebody, and they said they're going to take the engineers are going to be about an hour. So well, that's no good. Uh, and and you, you, you're, in the, down, you're in there on your own? You're, you're in there on your all alone? Yeah. All right. Now, you don't need to use a bathroom or anything, do you? You're going to be okay? No. You're going to hang on? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm all right at the minute. Okay. And they said, they said an hour. How long ago was that? They said it was going to be an hour. Uh, about 20 minutes ago now. 20 minutes, half an hour ago. All right. Well, how are you going to... Are the lights on in the lift and everything? It's not dark. Yeah, the lights are on, yeah. Right. I'm uh, laying on my jumper at the minute. I'm going to lay down. Okay, take it easy, yeah. Yeah. yeah oh, it's a shame you can't hear Bob. We've got some good tunes. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, don't say that. Yeah. How's the battery on your phone? All right, and I've got some signal, so I'm happy. All right, okay. Well, I might call you back. No, I will. I'll call you back a little bit later on, see how you're going. All right, I will do. Okay, and the name of the block of flats you, 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 you're stuck in in Welling Garden City again? Birch Court. Birch Court. Near the that's Queen Elizabeth it. Hospital there. Yeah, that's the one. Nadine, uh, we, it's weird. We were talking about people getting stuck and stuck stories this morning, and, and you're stuck in a lift. Goodness me. All right, back to Nadine in a bit. This is Bob FM. Chris Hubbard has your news. Well, there's a couple who went out to the uh, Himalayas. They were spending their honeymoon there, and a leopard crept into their hotel room in the early hours. It got into this hotel uh, and they s said they were woken up by it coming in. And they saw it? Yes. Yeah, they were in bed. Yes. Just incredible to, to think that it didn't go straight for them. I mean, maybe it didn't see them. I don't know. Maybe it just worked for housekeeping because they just walk in anyway. What? Housekeeping! <laughs> and then the door's open before you're even going to go, hang on a minute! Here we are. Bob's Breakfast. Hello. Nadine, it's Graham Mac. How, how are you? Back through to you. All right. Um, now, the the phone is okay. It's it's not running out of battery or, or anything because I couldn't get you just now. No, the signal's not great, but I've, 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 yeah. Okay. And uh, have you heard any news from the, the people who are, who are attempting to rescue you? No, I haven't heard anything. You, they, it's just been completely silent. Yeah, it has. <laughs> now, what about other people who live in the block of flats? Can't you, like, bang on the door of the lift? Yeah, a few of them are passing and talking to me. Yes? And what are they saying? You're all right. I haven't got anything to drink. Well, how would they get you a drink if you needed one? I don't know. All right. Now, are, are you all right for provisions? Yeah, no, I'm fine. I've got, I've got my lunch for work. Oh, you got your lunch? For, got of course. Water, yeah. Yeah, because you're on your way to work. It. All right, now, do you know exactly where you are? How many floors is this building? Uh, there's three. Yes. And I think I'm stuck between the first and the second floor. Right, so it's not that high up. No, it's not that high up. Now, you know in the movies when you see lifts get stuck and somebody goes out the trap door at the top? Yeah. Are you tempted to, to try that? No, I'm not tempted to try anything. No, no, I, I, I'm, ju I'm just thinking that would be a bad idea. Yeah, I think that's just for movies. Yes. I, I think you should stay put where you are, <laughs> and hopefully you'll get rescued soon. Hopefully, yeah. Very hot in here. It's very hot. It's getting hot? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, just stay calm. You sound like you're taking it all in your stride. Yeah, no, I have to. 
I've got much choice to do. No. <laughs> All right, Nadine, I'll check in with you in a bit. All right, wicked. Thank you. Uh, Can you play uh, a song for my dad, please? <laughs> yeah, for Dean, who, who told yes, me all please. about it. Yeah. Okay, yeah, what's it? It's Aerosmith. Yeah. Loving an elevator. Oh, okay, then. Okay. Yeah, wicked. Thank you. Boris Johnson is a porn star. I, I beg your pardon? The speech he gave straight after the Brexit result. Yes. That speech has been posted onto this website, Pornhub, under the title... Dumb British Blonde <laughs> has over 15 million people at once. I must just clarify it, though. He is fully clothed. You don't see the Boris Johnson. It's Bob. 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 Hello. No, Dink. Graham Mack from Bob FM. I was a little bit worried earlier when you said it was getting hot in there. How are you now? I'm all right. I've got my water. I'm all right. <laughs> okay, so you got... Well, don't drink too much water because, you know... No, because I need the toilet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, is there any sign of rescue at this stage? Have they called back? No, no sign yet. Is it worth giving them a, a G up? Who, who is it? What's what's the name of the company? Does it say there? Maybe I could give them a call. It's Patreon Lifts Leeted. Yes? Yeah. And, and what's their number? Is uh, 0208. O two O eight, yeah. Four six six nine nine. Nine nine. All right, let me give them a call. See if I can sort. See if I can hurry them up a bit. Oh, brilliant! And what's the, what's the what's the name of the company again? It's Patrons. Patrons. Patrons lifts Leeted. Patrons lifts. All right, and that's that's the number that's that's in the lift where you are. That's the emergency number. Yeah, that's the one. All right, I'll give them a call. Leave it to me, Nadine. All right, okay. thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. Bob's breakfast. The most important meal of the day. The British have a problem with commitment. I mean, really, we were never fully committed to the EU because we kept the pound, we kept pints and miles per gallon. The thing is... I don't think we're even fully committed to being Britons. We describe ourselves as British, as if we're only a bit Brit, like something that's not that big is only big-ish, or not that blue is just blue-ish, not that young is young-ish. We're British. See, the thing is, we can also be snobbish, churlish and standoffish which is all a bit rubbish this is bob's breakfast what's your getting stuck story sarah well i did get some clothes stuck on me in a changing room what do you mean well i tried something on that was a smaller size than it should have been but i was a bit confident that i'd get it <laughs> in the dress or top or something and i kind of put it on in the changing room and it was Stuck. It was it was stuck. I was about to dislocate my shoulder taking it out, <laughs> trying to take it off. I was getting hotter and hotter, and it was one of those kind of open plan changing rooms. Uh -huh. I was getting hot and panicky, and I didn't know what to do because kind of like one arm was in and one arm was out, so I had to tear it a little bit and then put it back on the hanger and go. You tore it to get out. <laughs> just a little bit. You little bad bit. person. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Are you still using Siri on your iPhone, the electronic helper? I used it once when I bought the phone, and that was it. Yeah, it's... I, d I don't get on with it's it. It's frustrating. Well, I, I've had a love-hate relationship with Siri. <laughs> let me let me just, um... Hey, Siri, uh, what is zero divided by zero? Imagine that you have zero cookies and you split them evenly among zero friends. How many cookies does each person get? See, it doesn't make sense. And Cookie Monster is sad that there are no cookies. And you are sad that you have no friends. <laughs> okay, you see how irritating she becomes? <laughs> She's very irritating with that answer. Hey, Siri. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? <laughs> it depends on whether you are talking about African or European wood. <laughs> hey, Siri. What are you wearing? You have the wrong personal assistant. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
Andy, uh, you may have some advice for Nadine. If she bounces up and down on the four corners... Yes. So if you imagine standing in a corner, putting your hands on the corner... Yeah. ...and then jump as hard as you can on all four corners... Yeah. ...there's a chance it will trigger it. H how do you know this, Andy? I know somebody's done it. R someone who's been trapped in a lift? Yeah, because sometimes what happens, they go... They get almost to where they want to go. Yeah. And it's literally the last quarter of an inch. Yes. Because they're designed to take, obviously, a lot of weight. Yeah, well, she's in there on her own. That's yeah. right. That's yeah. the problem. Yeah. It's oh, like, I see. It's not detecting her weight. Oh, I see. Maybe she's a skinny thing. Who Maybe knows? she's a tiny girl. Yeah, I was thinking that earlier. I thought, my word, if she's small... Yeah, then yeah. It, ...then it just needs that extra boom yeah, to yeah. get that to, to trigger the sensor. All right. Thanks for the advice, Andy. I'll let her know. It's worth a try... Graham, it, well, you know, it'll get her out of there. Okay, thanks a lot, there Andy. Is a chair, depends how big she is. You know, okay. She's only tiny, it might not work, but. Oh, all right, we'll, we'll see how we go. All right, thanks, Andy. If anyone's got any more advice on how you get, um, Nadine's uh, trapped in a lift in a block of flats in Welling Garden City. 01438 422 106. Well, we seem to have got the solution to a lack of GPs. The NHS is offering appointments with the doctor via computer webcam rather than in person to reduce the time patients need to wait to see a doctor. So, well, it won't be the first time someone's been asked to get undressed on a webcam. <laughs> I'm just calling up the emergency number that she said is in the is in the lift there. See if I can find out from the people who. Good morning. Hello, my name is Graham Mack. I'm calling from Bob FM and I've had a lady call me this morning. She's trapped in a lift in Welling Garden City. Oh, okay. Are you aware of this? Yes, we are. E excellent. Yes. You're, you're on the radio right now, by the way. I hope that's okay. Oh, are we? Yes, is that all right? <laughs> I hope you're so yes, fine. we've got an engineer in attendance. Oh, he's in attendance? No, I just spoke to her five minutes ago. She said she's still waiting. Oh, he's definitely on his way. Is he? Do you know how long it'll be? Um, not off the top of my head, no. Okay. Um, how long do these things normally, you know, how long I'll, does it normally I'll, take to I'll rescue... Phone the, well, it depends where the engineer is, obviously, yes. at the time, you know. But if you could give him a call, that'd be great. Yeah, I will. I'll chase him up. All but right. he's definitely on route. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank Cheers. you. All right, thank Bye. you. Bye. <laughs> Darren. Yeah, yeah, he was uh, getting people to ring up about giving speeches and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, what have you had to do? Uh, well, when I was at school, like, yeah, uh, I've got a school report in front of me. Mm -hmm. And I had to give, um, not a speech, but I had to talk about my hobby, yeah. uh, which was uh, digging up antique bottles and stuff. Right. My English teacher, Mrs. Fife, put... Darren's reading aloud is of a satisfactory standard and he has a confident and easy manner when presenting a talk to an audience. I should like to thank him for giving an excellent talk to the entire second year about his hobby, a talk which was received with great enthusiasm. <laughs> 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 so you didn't decide to go into that line of work? Uh, well, like, I actually, I, I've got a great interest in antiques and, uh, and my living room is a bit like a museum, to be perfectly honest with you, Graham. Uh, yeah, I'm still into antiques, but I ain't got so many bottles left because uh, I had a fallout with the police when they came round one day and smashed most of them. Oh, w yeah, what which, was that all about? Um, usual, like, when I was at that age, like, uh, around about 1980, to be honest with you, they didn't like me, and when they came round, they just used to upset me and upset my mum. So, uh, yeah, so I lost the plot one day and, uh, yeah, and got arrested and was in the Welling Times for the siege of Sweet Briar. But it weren't a siege, it was just me throwing all me uh, antique bottles of them in anger. Oh, oh, I see. They thought that you were. It was a siege situation, and you were just throwing bottles at them. It was. It was as innocent as that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah what's and, the uh, world come to? It. What's the world come to, Darren? When you can't throw a few bottles at a few policemen uh, without being accused uh, of staging a siege? Well, they shouldn't come round and upset me, then, should they? Well, well, like, at the uh, end of the day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They soon, they soon learned like, not to come round and upset me. Yeah, well, yeah, it sounds like they didn't learn that because you ended up going to jail. Well, yeah, well, you know, but at the end of the day, when I was in there, I didn't get any hassle from them then, did I? Yeah, well, you know why not? They probably think, don't bother with Darren, he's got a lot of bottle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hello? 
Nadine, Graham Mack, how are you going? Still stuck. <laughs> well, I, I called the lift company and they said there is a technician on the way. Okay. Now, in the meantime, Andy yeah. has called and he's had a friend who was trapped in a lift in a very similar circumstance to you. Okay, yeah. And he was on his own as well. Okay. Andy's theory is... Yeah, hang on, I'm sorry, I'm the phone, wait, I'm sick. Hello. Oh, oh, who are you talking to? Someone's trying to talk to me through the door. Oh, do you reckon it might be the, the guy ready to rescue you? Because that might be important. I think it's, a, it's one of my mates. Oh dear, can you find out who it is? Because that might be more important than what I'm about to say. Okay. Find out who that is, Nadine. Andy? It's gone. It's okay. a, it, I think it was my mate. It's okay. all right. Uh, all right. Well, anyway, Andy says that the lift mightn't sense that there's anyone in the, in the lift because they're not designed to, 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 to for just one person. They, they usually they need a bit of weight. Okay. He's saying if you stand in the corner, in each each one of the corners, with your hands on the walls in the corner, and okay. you jump up and down, it might just release it. Okay. He said a mate of his, can you try that for me now? Yeah, I will. So go to one of the corners and then and jump up in the air and then down. Yeah, I've done that. You did? I didn't hear you. Must be, you must be light light on your feet. Okay. Now yeah. go go to the opposite diagonal corner. You jump up in there. Anything? Well, nothing's happening. I can hear it sort of moving. Oh, oh, happening. oh, well, there you go. Well, go, go to the other two corners that you haven't done yet. <laughs> still nothing. I can't believe I'm still in here. It's been over an hour. I know. Uh, it's still, it's still not moving? No, no, oh, no. Okay. Um, I, try pushing all the buttons again. The ground floor button you were headed to the ground floor for. Yeah, nothing. No. No, alright. And how hot is it getting in there then? Quite warm. Is it? Alright. I, I took my jumpers off. Yeah. Alright. Okay, well, I'll check back in with you soon. Hang on in there, Nadine. Alright, okay. brilliant. Thank you. This is Bob. Good morning, Dave. I wanted to add to your cycling yes. uh, rant this morning. Yes. And I, and I totally agree with you wholeheartedly. Nothing wrong with cycling as a sport. You should, should no. just doesn't belong on the road. It's too dangerous. No. Stop it. We're trying to save lives here. Cyclists attack me for what I say about cyclists, and it's they're the ones who will benefit by not dying on the roads. You're 17 no. times more likely to be killed on the roads on a bicycle than you are in a car. It's get yeah. stop riding cycles on the road. They're they're sporting equipment. They should they belong on a track. That's right. I totally agree with you. And. You mentioned about them not using cycle paths when there's one available right yeah. on the road. But, but me and the wife, we like going over to Cruise Hill from Money Garden City on a Sunday morning. Yeah. And the cyclists really take it to another level. Really? Down along there. Because the country lanes through Newgate Street and Cuffley, they are riding up and down country lanes free abreast. Yeah. Um, and people are asking us to give them consideration and enough room. How would they like it if I drove my car in a velodrome? <laughs> Seriously. Honestly, my man. car doesn't belong in a velodrome. Bicycles do not belong on the public highway. That's wrong. Good morning. Hello, Good it's, it's Graham Mack calling from Bob FM again. You're live on the radio again. Hello. Yeah, I, I just spoke to Nadine. There's still no one there to rescue her. Yeah, I've just spoken to the... I don't know if it's the caretaker on site. He's uh -huh. just phoned up. Yeah. Um, our engineer is about 15 minutes away, so, you know, obviously he's got caught in traffic and stuff, you know, which has taken, you know, longer than we hoped to be there. Yeah. Um, but it's definitely not far now. Is, so. it, is there, it's getting hot in that lift. There's anything Nadine can do right now? Um, I mean, the best thing for her really is to just try and stay calm and, you yeah. know, not... She, she seems to be in good shape. She's not panicking yeah, by any means. Yeah, yeah. I, I know. It's really, you know, unfortunate that, that we didn't have an engineer in the area at the time. Yeah. But obviously... It was actually unfortunate that it broke down in the first place, I yeah, suppose. Yeah, of yeah. course. You yeah, know, yeah. It's, uh, you know I, I work for a lift company and I wouldn't like to get stuck in a lift. Yeah. You know, it's not nice. Yeah. 
but um, we we do our best to sort of get there as soon as we can. You right. know. So so I could call her back and tell her he should yeah, be there within fifteen yeah, minutes. Yeah, and hopefully might... the caretaker has probably already spoken to her because I've not long spoken to him. Yes. So okay. All right. Hey, thank you very much. That's all right. Cheers. Thank, thank you. you. Bye bye. What are you scared of? I bet you can't beat this lady in Essex. Her name's Melanie James. She's claustrophobic, agoraphobic, obsessive compulsive. She's scared of bees, cows, traffic jams and horses, and even travelling more than 50 miles from her home. She missed her best friend's wedding because she was petrified of travelling more than 50 miles away from home. Phobias. What's yours? Sarah. I do have a strange phobia. It's tall old ladies. What is it that's so scary about tall not, old ladies? It's not right. Old ladies should be tiny, little old lady. The saying little old lady. You see a big tall old lady. Oh, it, it just freaks me out. <laughs> I cannot bear tall old ladies. I get a little shudder when I see somebody. And I have a friend who's quite tall, and I keep saying to her, we can't be friends when you're old because I have a phobia of tall old ladies. That is horrible. <laughs> it's weird. Did I can't a, bear tall old ladies. Did a tall old lady do something to you when you were no. younger and traumatise you? Not that I remember, but tall old ladies is not right. All right. Well, thanks for sharing, Sarah. <laughs> when a meal has been ruined. What happened to you, Gary? Um, I went to Japan and met one of my friends yeah. over there. Yeah. And um, we went for a sit-down menu in a Japanese restaurant. Right. So we sat there and um, his girlfriend ordered some sushi up. Yeah. So this fish appeared, cut down past the gills all the way down and back with a big steak through it. Uh, all the meat and everything it chopped up with some salad on top. Yeah. And I thought, I started to eat some stuff and what was that? And then I looked sideways, looked at the fish again and thought, well, oh, that was a bit strange. And then I saw its gill style moving, its mouth started moving and everything else. It just been pulled out of the tank, chopped down the side and put on my plate. It's absolutely revolting. It was alive and you were eating it, it and it was looking at you while you were devouring it. Basically a live sushi, yeah. It was still, oh, it was just wrong, but <laughs> there you go. Was that the end of the meal or did you finish it? No, I didn't finish that. That was the end of the meal at that stage <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Ah! This is... David Cameron, going to be a tough act to follow for Theresa May. Did you see Prime Minister's Question Time? It was just a big joke yesterday. Cameron tried to get as many jokes in as possible. It was the David Cameron stand-up act, and it was quite funny. When it comes to women Prime Ministers, I'm very pleased to be able to say pretty soon it's going to be 2-0. <laughs> Let's just take the last week we both have been having these leadership elections. We got on with it. We've had resignation, nomination, competition and coronation. They haven't even decided what the rules are yet. <laughs> David Cameron, stand-up comedy. Going down well with the crowd. Oh, absolutely. If, if they ever got into power, it'd take about a year to work out who would sit where. <laughs> Comedy stylings of David Cameron. Come back out here, Mr. Cameron. Take a bow. The comedy stylings of David Cameron, the Westminster wag. The comic of the commons. Bringing hilarity to the house. Can we hear him once again for the one and only David Cameron? Amazing. And Absolutely. you think, Theresa May, follow that. Can you play what you just played in the news? I don't think it was going well. What to, So th to follow that, Theresa May does this. When we take the big calls, we'll think not of the powerful, but you. When we pass new laws, we'll listen not to the mighty, but to you. That will be the mission of the government I lead. What a contrast. Tumbleweed. Absolutely. It's not happening, is it? So there we are thinking, oh dear, our new Prime Minister just doesn't... After the stand-up performance of David Cameron, our new Prime Minister just doesn't have it. But then, 
she fires George Osborne and then appoints Boris Johnson as foreign secretary. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the comedy stylings of Theresa May. Theresa, come back out here. Let's have a bow. Theresa May. Bob's Breakfast. What's your navigational nightmare story? Leo. So basically, I was in the late district, mm -hmm. and uh, we literally ran out of power on the phone, and we didn't have any maps, unfortunately, so we decided to keep going straight along this uh, <laughs> along this really dark, narrow hill. My dad was driving, and I was just a passenger. Yeah. So we kept driving along, 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 and kept going, until we just saw a dead end, and, just saw, and then suddenly we just saw... Uh, just saw this one sheep at the end of the at the end of the road. We thought, oh god, it's like nine in the evening, and there's just this one sheep just lying in the in the end of the road. What are we doing? Yeah. So so we were just we were just completely like lost, and then for some reason the sh we the sheep just kept going forward. So we followed the sheep. <laughs> we kept following the sheep along the road because you had no other ideas. You thought we might as well. Yeah. Yeah, we had no other idea. So our only our only navigation is this wet drowned sheep just following this road so we thought we may as well okay let's go for it <laughs> so, so it was like half nine at night it was pitch black it was pitch black so we just kept going and going so we followed this sheep going along the along the road like uh, and then all of a sudden we just somehow made it to town by, by the sheep we were just following the sheep for about a good 20 minutes and somehow we made it you, you navigated it. by sheep yeah this one stray sheep and then the farmer came along and said oh you found the sheep yeah. Sheep <laughs> nav. He made us down the town. <laughs> right. Oh, had he lost the sheep? Yeah, apparently he lost Oh, you, so everybody was a winner. The sheep yeah, <laughs> took you back to town. You, the farmer got his sheep back. Yeah, exactly. It was a bonus for everyone. We couldn't believe it. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Now yeah. I know what it means. When you buy a sat nav, it tells you how much ram it's got. <laughs> <laughs> this is Bob. What was David Cameron humming to himself as he walked back into number 10? If you haven't heard it yet, this is, I uh, didn't realize the mic was still hot, and this is what David Cameron did. Do, 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 do. A lot of people have been trying to work it out. There's been talk that it was the theme to the West Wing. Do, do. Or perhaps it was something from Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh, Winnie the Pooh. Doo -doo, doo -doo. Andrew Davenport reckons he's nailed it. He says it's Tara's theme from Gone with the Wind. Thanks for getting in touch, Andrew. Tara's theme from Gone with the Wind. <laughs> doo -doo, doo -doo. Is that it? Doo -doo. Do, 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 do. You know it could well be, uh, maybe David Cameron is a bit of a fan of Gone with the Wind, maybe it's one of his favourite movies, I don't know. All I know is he is a little demob happy, he's leaving the job, I mean just listen to this. This is when Theresa May asked David Cameron about what to do when she becomes Prime Minister. What shall I go? What shall I do? Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Bob's Breakfast. Morning, Tracy. Hi, Graham. This morning we're talking about tattoos. Show us your tats. What do you got? Yeah, I have got three tattoos. What What of? I've got a cat on my ankle, a little cat face. Yeah. And I've got a fairy on my shoulder. Yeah. And um, what's the third one? Oh, the third one. I don't really want to say. No, come on, come on. <laughs> oh, God. It's a, it's a tattoo on my bum. <laughs> and what is it of? It's um, two little interlinking hearts. Okay. And why did you get that one? I had it done um, with a boyfriend. Okay. Were you sober? Many years ago. Were you sober many... at the time? Yeah. Come on. Okay. Um, do, are you still with that boyfriend? No. Oh, do you regret that one? No, no, not at all, because it's got no names or anything like that. Okay, and how does your current fella feel about that one? I'm not with anyone at the moment, so... How about that? But no no other ones have minded about that, because I didn't, they didn't, I didn't really tell them 
Oh, you didn't tell him the full story? Didn't tell him the full story. All right. So do you regret any of your tattoos? No, I don't. Okay, you like them? Yeah, I do like them, yeah. Yeah, I do do like them, yeah. Okay, so so for you, they are not a tramp stamp? No, definitely not. Okay. small. Right, I see. Right, always I see. A tramp stamp has to be a big one, does it? Well, it's got to be in an area, like, that looks really sort of tarty. And I mean, I know I've got one on my bum, but no one sees that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, but somebody now and again must see it, yeah. All right. Well, yeah, but yeah, I mean, yeah. it's not like, you know, I see a tramp stamp as when um, someone is bending over in the 99p shop. Yes. And their trousers come down and you see a great big whatever it is showing. Yeah. Oh, that doesn't happen to me. Okay, all right. Well, well, thanks for showing us your touch, Tracy. <laughs> Take care. Cheers. Bob's Breakfast. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. What is that? Morning, Pete. I'm just ringing about Dave Cameron. I think he's actually humming a little bit of the tune to McFadden and Whitehead. There ain't no stopping us now. Ain't no stopping us now. We're on the move. <laughs> that, that would make sense, wouldn't it? That would make I sense. Think, yeah, I think he's absolutely elated. <laughs> he's had an unforgiving job. Who would want to do that job? Exactly. And, and I think he's overjoyed. When you've been away with your other half and you've fallen out, what kicked it off? David, you were at a cabaret. Where was this cabaret? The awful came down in sunny Devon, North yes. Devon. Yeah. And, and we, were, we were there on, on a holiday and there was some evening entertainment and then, then there was this girl opposite who was looking at me and, and even though I wasn't doing anything and my wife decided that she got the right hump and stormed out as if I was doing something, even though we were just literally, I was just sitting there watching the cabaret. And what was the cabaret? Tom Jones impersonator. Tom Jones impersonator, right. So he couldn't have been that good if the girl was giving you the eye. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh. Know, well, obviously comparing me to Tom Jones, obviously. I don't quite know. Yeah, well, that's not <laughs> unusual. <laughs> <laughs> Bob's Breakfast. Hello. Hello, Nadine. Graham Mack again from Bob FM. How are you going? Not too bad. I'm still here. No sign of a rescue? Well, someone said they're going to be about 15 minutes. They were stuck in traffic. Oh, oh who, who told you that? Because I've just spoken to the lift company. They've just told me exactly the same thing. Yeah, so someone's, someone's on their way, so hopefully not too much longer. So who's told you? Is this the... She mentioned the caretaker of the building or something. Yeah, I think it's them. Yeah, I think it's them. What, is he it's shouting? Here, but I can't see him. Oh, I see. They're shouting through the door at you. Oh, hang on. The fire brigade has turned up. The fire brigade have turned up? The fire brigade? How do you know the fire brigade have turned up? Yeah, they're on their way. Uh, Nadine, how are you getting this information? Somebody's standing on the other side and telling me. I think they're making all the calls. Oh, I see. Right, I see. So, So have the fire brigade showed up or they're on their way? They're on their way. The fire brigade are now on their way as well. I can't believe it. Well, you know, we're all kind of hoping, you know, that you get your freedom soon. Yeah, hopefully okay. it won't be too much longer. Yeah, well, no, how it's... How long it will take them to get it sorted when they get it? Yeah, well, yeah, and it's now a race between the lift company and the fire brigade. Actually, I would yeah. say my money's on the fire brigade because they're used to dealing with emergencies. Yeah. But then we'll again, the lift company... Happens. Yeah, all right, so you're still okay, it's not too hot in there? No, I'm still okay. I've still got my water. I need the toilet soon, though. Oh, oh dear. Okay, yeah. well, cross well, your legs. Yeah, all right. Talk to you in a bit, Nadine. All right, thank okay. you. Okay, bye. Bye. This is Bob. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Sounds familiar. Morning, Pete. Can I play your new game, please? What's the new game? Um, what's Dave humming? Yes, what's Dave humming? That's right. Right. Yes, what would you like to suggest that Dave I is humming? Suggest. Yes. Singing in the rain. Singing in the rain? Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. we're having trouble with mm-hmm. We're not yeah. having a summer, are we? So he's <laughs> humming, singing in the rain. He could well be. Thanks very much, Pete, for taking Did part. I win? Uh, well, uh, I'm, I don't know because I don't know what the right answer is. Unlike What's Bob Doing, where I know what the answer is, I don't know what David Cameron was humming. 
I'm singing in the rain, just singing in the rain. What a glorious feel, and I'm happy again. Oh, my wife Julie says thank you for the birthday message you sent yesterday. Must oh, yes, so I tweeted her. Oh, you tweeted yes. Did she have a nice time? Uh, she did. you got to be careful because uh, birthday's a big deal for Julie. Right. Because I don't know if it's because she's the youngest of four. And oh, I, yeah. I don't know why. Might be. It I, could well be. Birthdays are a big deal. And she expects everybody to know, which she got a little bit annoyed yesterday in Hitchin. Hmm. They're filming the next season of that Dirty Doctor film. What's it called? Dr. Foster. Dr. Foster, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> soft porn in Hitchin yeah well they're fi they were filming yesterday in the square mm. so Julie's walking through the square I think she was going to the post office and they've got like cameras and stuff and they've got fake market stalls with fake flowers on it's all it's proper showbiz yeah but nothing's roped off so Julie's just walking along and there's an assistant director or somebody saying, "Excuse me, no, sorry, you can't. You're gonna have to. You can't walk through here." And she's like, "Do these people realise this is my birthday? I can walk through. What? It's not private property. No, it's not. No. Yeah. No. And the thing that was really annoying her was that there were loads of people just stood around in the square. And she's thinking, "You've told me to move. What about them?" And then suddenly she hears action, and they all start moving. <laughs> they were all extras. <laughs> Bob's breakfast. The most important meal of the day. Good morning, Ben. Graham, I've got a locked out story for you. Yeah, what happened? I was locked out of the car by my dog. By your dog? By the dog. What happened? <laughs> well, I used to have I used to five series BMW and I sent the dog to work with me every day. Now, the worst part about the five series is in the middle of it, in the centre console, it's got a little button that you can push to lock the doors. Right, central lock. So, I've, par I've parked, the, I parked my lorry up, locked the office, Put the dog in the car with the air conditioning on, locked the gates. When I've gone to get in the car, the dog's run over the centre console, stood on the central locking <laughs> button with my keys in the ignition and looking out. <laughs> so you're trying to get in the car and he's just looking at you. And he's sitting there smiling. He's a little staffy and he smiles at me and his tail's wagging. And he knows what he's done, I'm sure he does. And I'm getting him <laughs> to run backwards and forwards across the car trying to get him to do oh, it again. Oh, trying to get him to walk and on it again, yeah. And after about 40 minutes, he did. He, he did? It again. So he, he even let you in as well? In. <laughs> <laughs> he took me back in. Bob's Breakfast. Lost and found stories. What's yours, Dave? Shopping in Sainsbury's at the Poplars. My uh, wife and I turned up in the car. I got out of the car, and unknown to me, my wallet dropped out of my pocket. Yeah. And we went into the store, did yeah. our shopping, got to the checkout. Oh, whoops, no wallet. Right. Fortunately, my wife was able to pay by cash, so we got our groceries, went home. I got on the phone pretty quick, smart to the police. Yeah. And uh, while I was on the phone to the police, there was a knock on the door. There was a guy standing there with my wallet. Really? It was quite remarkable. Yeah. What's even more remarkable is the fact that my wallet had no identification in it whatsoever. All they had was cash, credit cards. And he'd found in there a receipt for a hire car, which I'd hired in Greece, a yeah. remote island in Greece. Yeah. And he got my, it was an Al at the Alamo company, actually. Yeah. And he contacted Alamo, and they'd given him my address. Wow. And he came round and gave it back to me. So he'd done his own little bit of detective work. Absolutely. What a sh what a smart what a lovely bloke. What a smashing bloke. Absolutely. Yes. And, and what a smart guy too to think. Right. What have I got? What evidence have I got? Well, I've got this. This yeah. is all I've got to work on. I'm going to follow this path. Yeah. I, I was absolutely astonished. It was wonderful. Really wonderful. Yeah. It restores your faith in human nature. It certainly does. Yes. And did you give him a reward? Yeah, we gave him the content of the cash. Content did you? Cash. <laughs> he <laughs> did all right then. <laughs> Well, good for him. Fair is fair. It all worked out great. David, that's a brilliant lost story. It is, isn't it? Yes. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Morning, Floyd. Smoking in the car. Uh-huh. There's a law against it, right? Yeah. What, why isn't there a law against pregnant women smoking if there's a law against second-hand smoke in a car? Yes, that seems unfair. You're absolutely right. And... and, 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 and there's and a baby on board. Pregnant women who are, who are smoking, first-hand 
smoke. Yes. And and because I, I, I see this at work all the time, like this. Yeah. There's a pregnant woman and she's smoking, and I, I don't understand it. No. I don't understand why there's a law against secondhand smoke in a car, but there isn't a law against. Her. I, I don't get. It. I just sorry. I just wanted to say that quickly. No, but, no, that is a good point. If you can't have kids, you can't smoke when there's kids in the car. But you can smoke if there's a kid in your womb. What's that all about? Turn your knob to Bob. When you've moved in somewhere, the stuff you've found that the people who used to live there have left behind. Cherie. New house. A couple of weeks into moving in, decided to go out in the garden, um, tidy up, put rubbish in the bin, that sort of thing. Decided to dig one of the borders. And as we're digging, there's no plants there. Boink. Okay, metal, hit metal, that's a bit weird. Mm. Carried on and sort of scraped it a bit with the spade and thought, oh, that's going to be an old water tank or something from the loft or something mm -hmm. like that. As we then cleared it, we realised it was a lot more solid than a water tank, so we got one of the fence posts to lever it out, and it was a safe. They'd buried a safe in the so, garden. And, well, because the house, I'm not implying that it was the people before that, but the house we'd bought was a repossession. Yeah. So it had been empty for some time. So whether someone had got into the garden or not, I don't know. But we called the police just to say, look, I don't know if you're interested, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So they sent two policemen around because yeah. they got it out in the patio and cleaned it down. Yeah. And it heard on the bottom of it, it got like a ring of, um, sorry, a concentric ring of holes like with a drill in order to prise it open. It or, someone had already it looked like somebody had tried to get into it because it. it was locked. Yeah. So the police took it away. Yeah. And then probably this would have been at the weekend. Probably three or four days later, they called me in, um, and I actually worked for the local um, group of newspapers at the time. So they were mega excited that you know something was going on. So they let me go to the police station. Yeah. I was there for a couple of hours, being questioned quite. Quite intensely, really. Oh, they thought oh, you knew a little bit more than you were letting on. Oh, you know, you sort of think, oh, you know, there's got to do it, but why would you put it in your own garden? But anyway, and then they kept it. They reported back to me it had been stolen wow. from a local firm, but they didn't give me any details or dates or anything. And then, ironically, I had a friend that was a civilian admin person at the Stevenage Police Station. She's that blooming things in the corridor. We keep catching our tights on it. And, <laughs> and it was there for months. And then probably, I don't know, about six, seven months later, they wrote to me and said, you know, no further process. Um, yeah. Would you like it back? I said, no, don't worry about it. <laughs> you keep it. You dump it. It's because it was, as you can imagine, a safe is ever so heavy. So the, they'd, um, managed, they'd managed to get it open, though, had they? They'd managed to get it open. Of course, they're serial numbered, so they could then trace back how... Well, did you ever find been. out what was in it? I believe it was empty. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I don't yeah. believe it was empty. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think you would have been questioned the way you were if it Absolutely. was empty. Absolutely. I mean, it could have been documentation and stuff like but that. But aren't However, you it honest? It could have been a wad of cash, couldn't it? Yeah, you went to the... I think if I was going to go to the police, I would go to the police after I'd got it open. Yeah, very <laughs> I don't, true. I don't very think true. Before. But, you may have slipped up there, Cherie. I know, I know. But, but, you, but, know you but did there the you right go. thing. Wow. Good morning, Mick. Good morning, Graham. Biggest mistakes at work. Yes, what have you done? Every afternoon we get these dodgy phone calls from people, you know, these sellers and that at work. Yeah. And you have to drop all your work and you have to go to the phone and, and do the last number redial and it's no number registered. Yeah. I was working, trying to struggle to get all this work out because I was a bit stressed and snowed under. And then the, the phone rang about four times. I kept on walking to the phone. It was no number redial. And then I picked the phone up and then it was, what you do, you wait for them to start talking and then you know it is. And it yeah. all went quiet. So I, I started like effing and blinding down the phone. <laughs> put the slammed the phone down. Right. Did last number redial and it was a number. So I rung it, and uh, and he, he was a priest, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he wanted us to do some work for him. I apologise. Uh, I said it wasn't me on the phone. I said there's some bloke in the phone workshop. I said you, I was in the you, toilet. So you lied. You lied to a priest. <laughs> yeah. And that makes That's it better, myself. does it, Mick? That makes everything all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bob's breakfast. It's back on. I'm a celebrity, get me out of here, where celebrities go on Bush Tucker trials and have to eat bugs and other disgusting stuff. What's the most unusual thing you've ever eaten? Cherie? A long time ago when I was a teenager, I was, um, I was in the army kit. Mm -hmm. 
And, of course, you get taught several things, camping skills, map reading and all the rest of it, and part of it comes under, like, survival skills and stuff. Yeah. And there's only as a, a proof of point you're encouraged to carry sort of herbs and spices and stuff like that in your kit in case you've got sort of rations that you didn't like or anything. And to prove a point, we cooked worms. You and ate worms? Yeah, to f- and flavoured them in order to prove worms? a point. It's only meat. Worms? <laughs> what, what, uh, what were they, they, they were fried, were they? Yes. yes. Fried worms yeah, uh, and it, with spices. Yeah, just just whatever we had, Chinese spice, spice garlic, or whatever you could, or even natural stuff, sort of like um, natural garlic and mint and that sort of thing. It was just to prove a point that you could, if you were that hungry, yes, you would eat anything. Uh, did it prove it? What what do worms taste like? Gristly, like gristly <laughs> rubber bands. <laughs> and and do, you ha- do they have to be filleted or anything? <laughs> no, just... you just throw them in, just throw them in, and just uh, and shut your eyes and chew and say, right, I've done it. Get on, move on. <laughs> <laughs> so it was just it was just to prove a point. Sheree, thank you very much. Absolute pleasure. Hello. Nadine, Graham Mack, how are things? What's the latest? The fire brigade are here. They're breaking it... Oh Okay, thank you. Yeah, they're here now. They're, they're, so what are they trying to do? Prize the doors open with the yeah, jaws of life or something? It's, it's working. What's working? They're, they're moving from it. The lift's moving. Oh, the, what, it's going up or down? It's going down, I think. All right. So, so you... I could hear them all. There's quite a few of them. I could hear them all that time. Hey, Nadine, this could work out well because you might soon be surrounded by some firemen. I know. I can hear them all. I'm getting excited. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so talk us through, this morning you got in the lift to go to work. What floor do you live on? Uh, I live on the third floor. Right, which is the top floor of the block. You get in there, you push the button, the doors close, and it goes down a bit, and then that's the end of that. Yeah, and I've been here ever since. Right, so so what time Very was... Hot. It? I need the toilet, and I want a drink. <laughs> what time did you get in the lift? About quarter to eight. Oh, wow, you've been in there a long time. Yeah, it's been y- a long time. Y- yeah, very, yeah. very stressed, I think. <laughs> yeah, but it, it sounds like you've got the right men on the job now. Yeah, I'm very happy about that. Yeah, OK. Yeah, all right, <laughs> talk to you in a bit. All right, cheers. cheers. This is Bob. Good morning, Dave. Um, but were you talking about things found in yeah. houses when you moved in? Yeah. Well, this gets a bit racy. I found rather a lot of very explicit um, Polaroids and uh, VHS tape. Oh, my goodness. And these were clearly homemade so These were clearly homemade with, and, and the lady in question, well, the men in question, were not, I say men, they were clearly not her husband. We'll call them, they were Caribbean gentlemen, and her husband wasn't. And it was always the same lady? It was the same woman, but different Caribbean men in, in Polaroids and an unplayable VHS tape. How, how do you mean un- unplayable? Unwatchable? It was, uh, well, it was after the tape was knackered, so... Oh, well, how do, you, how, do you, how do you know she was on that one, then? Well, it's, a, it's a, probably a good guess if they were all wrapped together. <laughs> so. I see, right. And In between two broken floorboards. And did you meet the people who you, you got to play, the previous residents? It was, um, it was the, uh, saw the lady before, before got moving in there, yeah. Holy dooly. I'm Graham Mack, and I hope you're enjoying the podcast. If you are, make sure you share it on Facebook and Twitter, and you can subscribe at iTunes. Hello. Nadine, Graham Mack, how are things? I'm out. I'm free. Hey! Who was it got you out? Was it the lift company or the fire brigade? They both turned up at the same time, but the fire brigade's done the most work. Yeah, and are the fellas there? They all, they all, they're ni- nice looking fellas? Yeah, nice looking fellas. <laughs> <laughs> so are you, st- are you still going to go carry on to work now, or is that it? Is this your day? Yeah, I've, I've got to go back to work. I'm actually four months pregnant as well, so that's why they have to send out the... The fire brigade. Nadine, why didn't you say something before now? <laughs> it would have increased the urgency. I know. Why did you keep that to yourself? <laughs> I did tell them. I did tell the engineers. But they Nadine! They were stuck Goodness me! 
No, I don't. All right. So you there. you think you're okay? Everything's okay? Yeah, I'm okay. I could, I could I used the toilet as soon as I got out. Right, okay. <laughs> and goodness me, four months pregnant. I had no uh, idea. Wow. I got in there about 20 to 8. Yeah. I've only just got out now, so. Wow. It's been a long time. Yeah, it has. And so you're still going to go to work today. Where do you work? Uh, I work... I'm actually an assembler. I make air conditioning units. You make air... If only you had an air conditioning unit oh, in no. that lift when it was I'm getting still hot. still hot now. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> Thanks for letting us follow your dilemma. I'm glad we've got a happy ending here. That's all right. Did you play, did you play with Dad's track? I maybe? played Love in an Elevator, just like you. Yeah, I played it for your dad, Dean. Who was he, he was who Can called me up and told me. What's the and name of the boyfriend Fletcher? Fletcher. Oh, oh, well, I'm sure he he's been listening to your story. Yeah, and he's been listening. They've all been listening at work. Tuned uh, in to you. What's the name of the work? The name is Lewis Tyler and Sons. Okay, and they're in Welling Garden City. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, well, Nadine, so glad it's a happy ending. Thank you very oh, much for brilliant. letting me share thank it. You've made my morning. You've made our morning. And four <laughs> months pregnant, I didn't know. Hey, thank oh, you so God. much. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Cheers, Nadine. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Bob's Breakfast. <laughs>